All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for, uh, for joining us. I'm going to share a few remarks about last night's incidents, and then we'll hear from Chief Murad, Chief Sean Burke from South Burlington, former Deputy Chief here in Burlington, and the ATF uh, resident in charge, Alex Smith. Last night, we experienced two more alarming and tragic homicides in this spike of gun violence we've been experiencing through the past two years, especially in 2022. I wanna thank the Burlington Detective Unit, our partner agencies and brave, brave officers who were on the scene last night who apprehended Mr. Descent and ensured that there will be immediate accountability for these terrible acts of violence. Ending the spike in gun violence has been the city's top public safety priority since the spring, and it will remain so until we see these shootings end. The BPD detective unit remains well-staffed and focused on making good on our pledge to do everything we can to hold perpetrators of gun violence in Burlington accountable. On Thursday, the chief announced four arrests for recent incidents, including a recent assault and robbery committed at gunpoint. We've arrested now the shooters in eight of the 13 shootings this year that have resulted in injury or death, and we are closing in on further announcements. Despite all the steps that we've taken to expand our public safety resources in the downtown since the spring, it's clear that we need to do more until the current climate improves. I've directed Chief Mirad to explore all possible avenues for accomplishing this despite our current severe workforce constraints. And we plan to have further news on this to share soon. I'll close by saying this. I know that these events have shaken our community. We are not used to this level of violence in Vermont and we should never get used to it. There are broad societal forces driving violent crime nationwide. And our city is not immune to those. And we cannot promise that these homicides are the last violent crimes that, we will, that will happen here. I do promise that we will continue to relentlessly deploy new resources, seek new partnerships, and pursue new strategies until we restore the level of public safety and low rate of violent crime that Burlington's have long known and enjoyed. Uh, I'd like to ask Chief Murad to come uh, forward and give some details uh, on the events last night. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, and thank you all for being here. Um, the mayor is correct. This, this, uh, these incidents do send a shock through our city, uh, but they've also sent shocks through two families. Uh, we have two people who are dead. Um, and I do want to to recognize that, to acknowledge that, that, uh, that there are people today feeling a uh, loss from uh, what is in our society and rightly so the ultimate crime, taking another person's life in a criminal manner. Um, I wanna acknowledge uh, a lot of partners, not just those who are here and who will speak uh, to, to things that are in their bailiwick, uh, including the ATF and South Burlington, but UVM deployed officers to us last night. Other members of the Chittenden County Gun Violence Task Force deployed members to us, deployed members last night. Uh, this was a, an all hands on deck effort across two different municipalities uh, and two pretty intense crimes. Uh, those crimes began thus um, at about 8.15 hours last night. Uh, at 20.15 hours, Burlington police dispatchers received calls about gunfire in an apartment at the Lake Champlain Apartments at 185 Pine Street, an apartment complex belonging to the Burlington Housing Authority. Sheikh Noor Osman, age 40, was found unresponsive and subsequently declared dead at the scene. Mr. Osman was previously a victim in a shooting that took place in City Hall Park on May 23rd of this year. He was struck in the head in that incident and we believed returned fire in self-defense. We have not yet identified the other party in that incident and we do not believe that that incident was related to this one other than the fact that Mr. Osman was involved in both. Mr. Osman was arrested for aggravated assault in December of last year for threatening another man with machete. The status of that case is uncertain. Detectives and members of the Chittenden County Gun Violence Task Force responded to the scene on Pine Street and began to identify and interview witnesses. Uh, they began to collect evidence and search for a suspect. Initial reports suggested that the suspect in this incident may have been involved in the gunfire incident that uh, took place in City Hall Park on September 28th. 
Uh, at approximately 2307 hours, South Burlington Police Department dispatchers received calls about gunfire at the Swiss Host Motel and Village on Williston Road in South Burlington. Responding officers there entered an apartment and found Brian K. Billings, 37, unresponsive. He was subsequently declared dead at the scene. A witness positively identified Denroy Dassin, 52, as the alleged killer. We issued a be on lookout or BOL for Mr. Descent and the gold SUV that he was reported to be driving. At 2334, the suspect's vehicle slowly drove past the Pine Street crime scene and was observed and reported by an officer who's uh, on scene security at that scene. She called it in and the officer in charge, Lieutenant Mike Henrys, responded to the area to canvas. Uh, during that canvas, he observed the suspect yelling at a female in the vicinity of the Simons on South Winooski. And when the suspect drove away, Lieutenant Henry followed at a distance. His plan was to initiate a controlled stop and he asked for additional resources to join him. He did not stop the vehicle. At 2341, however, while driving east on College Street, the suspect noticed uh, Lieutenant Henry following him. The suspect stopped his vehicle, exited with his hands up and empty. At this point, Lieutenant Henry illuminated his blue lights and he stopped and exited his vehicle as well. He ordered Mr. Descent to get to the ground at gunpoint and Mr. Descent shouted, I'm not getting on the ground, you'll have to shoot me, as well as a number of expletives. He re-entered his vehicle and drove away. At this point, an on-duty sergeant who was responding to Lieutenant Henry's call for assistance encountered uh, Mr. Descent's vehicle and initiated a short pursuit. It lasted approximately 63 seconds, during which the suspect attained high rates of speed in the city, over 60 miles an hour, made several turns on St. Paul, on Main, on Battery, and then ultimately on King and into Perkins Pier and the waterfront. Here, the suspect exited his vehicle, which was apparently left in drive, and it crashed at a low speed into a low wall at approximately 23, 43 hours, terminating the pursuit. The suspect fled into the darkness in the vicinity of the spot on the dock restaurant. Multiple additional units, including members of the Chittenden County Gun Violence Task Force, arrived on scene. They established a perimeter. They prepared to conduct a tactical search, and they called for the emergency response vehicle to be brought to the scene. But before an officer could be dispatched to retrieve that vehicle here at 1 North Avenue, officers noticed movement in the vicinity, and Mr. Descent appeared at approximately 2356 hours. He demanded that officers shoot him, and he did not comply with commands. He shouted profanities at the officers instead. One officer deployed a conducted electrical weapon, or CEW, which is more commonly known as a taser. There was no effect to that deployment. When that failed, another officer used a less lethal impact munition or LLIM, specifically a shotgun that is designed to fire beanbag rounds. Uh, the suspect was struck twice and then at that point complied and lay on the ground uh, and was taken into custody at approximately 2357 hours. This was a use of force against a person of color. Uh, according to our executive order of September 2020, we reported that to the mayor as we do all uses of force uh, against people of color, and we will report it to the public as we do all uses of force by members of the Burlington Police Department, every single one. Mr. Descent was uh, held without bail. He was transported to the Northwest State Correctional Facility early this morning, and he was arraigned earlier today. Uh, he has been held in, uh, he's, he will continue to be held until another hearing. Um, this was the 25th gunfire incident for 2022. This was the 13th shooting in which a person was struck by gunfire, and this is the fourth murder in our city. Um, and I will open it up to questions for myself or for any of the people who are here. We hear from Sean Burr. Of course. Mike, what would you like to hear from Sean Burr? <laughs> Whatever you want to tell us about this murder. I think, homicide. Yeah, the homicide was outlined uh, in the detail that we're willing to share at this point by Chief Murat. Our investigation is still ongoing. The Vermont State Police is on scene with their crime scene uh, technicians. And once we have everything, uh, all the forensics accounted for, all the witness statements accounted for, and what amounts to copious amounts of ambient video in the area, we'll be moving forward with charges with this Chittenden County State Attorney's Office. Is there any rush on charges because he's being held without bail? There is no rush. Uh, I understand that his kids may have seen him get shot. Again, that would be part of the investigation. I can say that the family was home at the time. Pardon me? The family was home at the time of this incident. Whether or not the actual incident took place at the threshold or in front of the unit, that's all part of the investigation. 
When was the last homicide in South Burlington? 2018, Annette Wolf Labamba. What is the relationship between the victim and the suspect? Do they know each other? So that is all to be determined, and, and uh, it, we're still in the earliest stages of this investigation. I mean, these incidents happened less than 24 hours ago. Um, I think there's been a remarkable amount of work done in order to make this apprehension. Uh, as Chief Burke just told you, with regard to the incident in South Burlington, that is in its earliest stages. Uh, ours is as well, although an affidavit has been filed um, sufficient to have the suspect held. Uh, what are the relationships? What are the motives? You know, I've said it uh, a couple times at some of these incident, uh, some of these events recently. Um, those are very important to us. They're certainly important for building a case. They're certainly important for presenting a case in court because they resonate with people. But when it comes down to it, motive is a secondary factor to whether or not somebody did what they did. And I do believe that we have sufficient evidence here to uh, to be able to put forth a strong case that the suspect did what he did. The suspect. Uh been interviewed already in connection with the investigation for that recent uh, shooting or gunfire incident to be on fire? No, we had executed a search warrant at a home associated with him uh, in order to recover evidence that we believed was associated with that crime. That is residence in South Burlington? It was a residence in South Burlington. And what would be the address on the search warrant? I don't know. I'd have to find that exact address for you. It would be back post on that. Yes. So, so far he's only been charged with the Pine Street homicide, is that correct? That is, that's what's in the affidavit chart, yes. Where would you categorize this, Chief, when it comes to the shooting incidents that have happened in the city? There's been random attacks, there's been targeted attacks, there's been attacks involving young people, domestic violence. Where does this sort of fall in this, and what, for the city as well? We're certainly working on that. There are some indications that the gunfire on uh, in City Hall Park may have been may have been have, have something to do with with money. Um, we don't know that that's a case here. Um, we are are looking to determine what this is or was not. And you haven't said the word drugs at all in this case. It's, a lot of the shootings have been drug related. So. Well, that's not correct. So a lot, not a lot, have been drug related. I think that the drug related phenomenon has been a relatively recent one. We certainly know that people who are involved in gunfire also often are involved in drugs. It's just a nexus. Uh, but what we don't see is the fact that uh, the drugs or the transaction of drugs or the trafficking of drugs drives the, the violence. In fact, the violence seems to be driven more by interpersonal relationships in many of our gunfire incidents uh, or merely beefs or merely, uh, frankly, ego um, and people kind of bumping up against each other. Uh, like Brownian motion with molecules just sort of agitating one another in public spaces. That has been, up until recently, the pattern of most of our gunfire incidents. The incident in City Hall Park that was a murder uh, is certainly an exception to that. We do believe that to be narcotics related. Uh, this most recent incident, as I said, it may have a monetary relationship. There, was in, there are indications that it may have been over money. Is that drug money? We don't know that. Uh, and this uh, murder, uh, both of these murders uh, last night, we do not know what those are. So really, uh, the number that have been directly result uh, over the past two and a half years, as we've seen gunfire increase in Burlington and in the surrounding areas as well, but particularly in the Queen City, uh, drugs has not been a major driver of those, although it has been an ancillary part of participants' lives. I'm trying to keep this straight, but the, the target of the gunfire in City Hall Park last week, uh, is that target at all related to the shooting or the, the homicide? Okay. We do not believe so. So this would be, uh, if it's fair to call him a suspect in that case as well, this is the, he's, he's accused of shooting at three people in the last week. That would be believed believe to have done so, yes. Chief, in all of these, uh, 25 instances, uh, can you, is it over characterization that these are folks who are fairly recent uh, residents of the area? Yes, I, I believe that to be an over, I believe that to be a mischaracterization. I believe the majority of these involve people who are people from Burlington, who have lived uh, their lives in Burlington, who have been uh, in many instances in Burlington since birth or since very young ages. 
Um, uh, the people involved in this are folks with whom we've had, for the most part, interactions over a great number of years. The exception being our uh, shooter. A shooter, our, my knowledge of his history goes back about a year plus uh, with regard to involvements in, in our Valcor system. Does that mean he wasn't here earlier than that? I don't have an answer to that right now. But insofar as having interactions with police, it only goes back a year plus. Uh, that is not true of, of uh, other people involved in this, both as witnesses, uh, as, as victims. Uh, there are many people who are and have been long-term residents of Burlington. Looked like actually Richard, who we were looking for uh, for that robbery the other day, was at the apartment at some point. Is she still missing? Uh, she okay. has not yet been apprehended. Uh, she was reported to have been in that apartment at the time of the shooting or immediately prior. She was not on scene when officers arrived. To what end is ETF involved in this? Is it the ballistics evidence or? Great question. Sure, absolutely. Good afternoon, I'm Alex Schmidt. I'm a resident agent in charge of the uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives Field Office here in Burlington, Vermont. Uh, ATF has been spearheading, as you know, uh, with the Burlington Police Department, the Chittenden County Gun Violence Task Force. Uh, last night, we activated that task force and uh, I want to certainly thank our partners who came out from the Milton Police Department, Vermont Fish and Wildlife, uh, Vermont State Police Narcotics and Investigation Unit was out last night for a total of uh, approximately 10 additional resources that were out there last night. You have to remember, uh, you know, these two departments, they're holding, they're holding two homicide scenes, they're resource constrained, I would presume on a Sunday night, uh, not a lot of, not a lot of officers out there. So, you know, Chittenden County Gun Violence Task Force, we were notified by Burlington Police Department very quickly that there was a presumed homicide in Burlington. Notifications went out to those partners and we had, you know, within an hour or so, we, we brought to bear an additional almost 10 resources that I'd say were uh, uh, extremely helpful in, in assessing what we had. We responded up to South Burlington to the scene up there. We responded back down to the scene in Burlington. Um, I was there personally when he was taken into custody down outside Spot on the Dock restaurant. Um, the officers and agents that were involved in that did a phenomenal job, showed incredible restraint taking him into custody and, and bringing about a safe resolution to this. So, you know, we, we, uh, when we showed up there, there weren't a ton of, there's several Burlington officers sort of holding what they had down there. Uh, we showed up with the additional resources to help and sort of uh, bring about a safe resolution to this, but Burlington officers who were involved did an incredible job last night. So, uh, you know, that's sort of the uh, reactive part of this. We're obviously going to address the, pro, you know, the proactive part. Um, we're certainly going to work with them on the ballistics evidence matching that. Uh, we have a, as we, as we did, with, you know, in the press release, we have a knifing machine coming to our office, which is actually slated to arrive this week and should be up and running in short order, which is going to help us make uh, incredibly quick links to some of these gunfire scenes. So that is sort of some of the resources that we're bringing to bear, both with the Chittenden County Gun Violence Task Force and over our office. What does it say about uh, the defendant uh, returning to the scene of the crime? I mean, that's always one of those jokes that they always talk about that the, you know, the suspect always returns to the scene of the crime. It looked like this was one of those cases. Like if you've Not been very in, bright, probably. Like if you've been in law enforcement for any length of time, like we all have up here, you, you see it all. And, uh, and you know, as far as investigation part of that, I'm not going to comment any further on that. Question up in the motel in South Burlington. Do you know if it was uh, the victim was was living in the motel, or was she staying there on vacation, or what? No, the victim and his family lived at the hotel. Okay. This is for anyone. I mean, what is your message to people in Burlington who are feeling really unsafe in the area, Greater Chittenden County, feeling really unsafe today? Um, what do they need to know moving forward? Um. These are scary incidents, uh, and I know that the community feels unrest because of this. What I can say is that uh, Mr. Descent will not be doing anything to anyone for quite some time, um, and that is a function of the work that's done by the, the folks who are, are part of, of this world. Uh, we need the public's help in that. We, public safety is a shared responsibility. If people are frightened, and I know they are, we need to work with them together. We need to know what is happening. We need assistance in some of these things. And I think that we also need support. Um, I want to note something that, uh, that Agent Smith, uh, Schmidt noted as well, which is the, the restraint that was shown in this incident. Um, Lieutenant Mike Henry uh, exhibited remarkable constraint, restraint, and, and yet it is not abnormal among our officers. The, the, that car stop 
where the suspect came out of the vehicle towards him. Uh, yes, hands up. Yes, hands empty. But then at one point goes back to the car to reach inside that car uh, is an incredibly fraught moment. It is the kind of moment that in many other places results in something that is very different than what we had last night. And that's not to say that we might not have something like that if circumstances were just a little bit different. And yet, in this instance, the way it was handled by uh, Lieutenant Henry was phenomenal. The way it was handled at the waterfront when this person comes out of the dark, again, no knowledge of whether or not he's armed at that point, uh, has just murdered two people, allegedly, uh, comes out, is completely uncooperative, and we have a, a safe resolution uh, is one that, that frankly runs counter to, to things that I think are sometimes said about, uh, about the agency and the way in which we work. Um, and that is why I make every single use of force public, so that the public can ascertain for itself how we function in these matters and how we perform in these kinds of uh, situations. Um, I'm pleased to say that we've got a redaction specialist who is currently in background. I'm hopeful to have that position hired so we can start releasing video as we've agreed to do. Uh, but, and, and dispel the notion that there is something in our use of force that suggests that we see some people in our community differently than we see other people. That's an assertion that has been made and I do not believe it at all. I take great, great objection to it. Um, how do we deal with, with how people feel? I think that what we need to recognize is that things have changed. And for us to, to get back to where we were is going to be a shared effort. The city council has, has given us the tools. The mayor worked incredibly hard to get those tools, uh, tools around budget, tools around contract. Um, now we have to rebuild. And, and we are doing so in a really complicated time. You know, there are, there are neighborhoods in Florida that are gone. And maybe they are insured, and maybe they have the tools to rebuild. They have maybe they were insured for more than the value of the home they had on that land. But good luck trying to find people who have the equipment and people who have the time, the contractors necessary to rebuild. That's going to be a long process for those places. It is no different here. This department got walloped in a way that made it uh, a little different than it had been in the past. We want to rebuild. We've got the tools to do that. We want to do so for our neighbors, for the people we serve. That's why we get up and do what we do every single day. Um, and so uh, to, to folks in the community, I, I merely say that, that we are out there working. We did a, a press release on Friday about a number of cases that had strong resolutions. This case was resolved within, uh, within 15 hours, actually less, within about four hours from the actual crimes. Uh, it's got a lot more to go. This is nowhere near over for us. We have huge amounts of investigatory work that still need to be done. Detectives are going to be working on this case and all those others that have resolutions enough for me to make a press release about them or say, we apprehended this one. That is not, that is maybe 50% of the way done. And then we bring in prosecutorial partners. Our detectives continue to work on these things. We are, are, are really working on every single cylinder. We are basically been at Redline for a while and we're doing it because we want this community to be everything that we want it to be and that our neighbors want it to be too. When will the uh, video from Lieutenant Henry uh, be made available? I know you said you're working on it. But that is not a video that break. falls within the scope of our agreement um, for release. Uh, that would be video that would be available only after this case is resolved. Can you, uh, Frank, refresh my memory? You don't count all shootings in Burlington. You've got two classifications. And you're saying this is the, whatever the 25th shooting. But that's not all shootings in Burlington or gunshots, reports of gunshots fired. I think it is by the term, by the definition I use. Yes, it absolutely is. Is, is there something you're getting I, at? Well, I thought, I thought in one of the earlier press conferences, you tried to define two different kinds of shootings in Burlington. And, and like the shooting involving Burlington police officer uh, on what was it, that know, drive, I don't think shooting. that's included in that number, is it? That's not a criminal shooting. That is absolutely not. Determination in that case, there was no crime. We'll wait for a, a determination, but I have seen that shooting. I have looked at it strongly. I am eager to be able to put forward my belief about that shooting. My understanding, after reserve, uh, after reviewing more than five hundred officer-involved shootings at the NYPD, um, uh, being someone I spent years in uh, working on officer-involved shootings, I'm eager to talk about that shooting. Um, and can't wait for it to be done uh, at the stages it was. I believe that the Vermont State Police have finished with it. I believe it is in the hands of prosecutors. It is not a criminal shooting. It doesn't get counted. Our definition is very clear, criminal shootings. Probable cause that a discharge occurred, reasonable suspicion that it was criminal. Um, I have a 
that's the shooting. Well, gunfire, that's gunfire. Shooting is when a person's struck, but that's the, I, I don't think that's what you so mean. So you're drawing a distinction between gunfire and shooting. I always have. Yeah, and that's what I was asking about. No, I'm, no you're asking me to, to call something criminal that I don't believe no, it is. Didn't. The I'm definition, the definition has always been, is it a criminal act? Shootings and criminal acts are two different. No, uh, criminal acts. It's the, the crime is, is part of it. Anybody else? Yes. Um, yeah, you said you believe that there's basically that there is money involved in the shooting. Like there, money was a motive. Not in the so shooting. I, there, we believe that money might have been involved in the gunfire incident that took place in City Hall Park. Is it a common motive amongst the twenty-five shootings that happened this year? No, I would say the majority of those were not involved with, with money. As I said before, I think that the majority of those actually had to do with uh, interpersonal relationships. Did you say that the victim at the Pine, at Pine Street was also involved in the earlier City Hall Park? Yes, incident? the victim at Pine Street was the victim in a shooting in May uh, in which he was struck and another person fired at him. And has there been an arrest of that? No, we have not yet identified the other party in that. Uh, we've got leads. It's an open investigation, um, but uh, we did not identify the other party. Uh, don't even know whether or not he was struck. Uh, there was some indication that he might have been, but then uh, it was never confirmed. We, uh, we don't believe that individual is from Burlington. We believe that individual is, is somewhere else in New England. What do you know about the, the defendant's uh, history? You said he, I think he'd been a year or so. What do you know about pre Burlington? I have nothing about him pre Burlington. I don't know the criminal record. Or no, I don't. I don't. Or detect the death they may have. They may know. I don't know. Alex, do you know if he's a convicted felon? I don't know off the top of my head. How many police interactions has he had during his time in Burlington? I believe there are currently 14, and, and three of those are from last night. And about 185 Pine Street, is that a place that police um, have responded to frequently in the past? So there were uh, two gunfire incidents earlier this year that did not result, uh, result in anybody being struck. They are incidents that we have really zero solvability factors for, but they happened in the vicinity of that apartment building uh, on Pine between King and Maple, both of them. They were early morning uh, incidents. I can't remember exactly when. I want to say probably April or March. Um, the uh, Those both occurred. There was a shooting in that uh, where a person was struck and injured in that complex in, uh, I think, either October or November of 2020. Um, but there would be press releases available for that. Uh, and yes, there, you know, we, we do respond to that location uh, at times. What exactly does the department um, expect the public to do in terms of working with them to combat all of this? Uh, you know, as I said, I mean, we need the public to be eyes and ears on these things. We want the public to, to note when uh, things are happening. We do have a, a tip line for narcotics transactions for the, to the extent that some of these uh, are, are we, we fear that they may be increasingly involved with narcotics. Um, there, we do have uh, obviously reporting mechanisms for other kinds of crime. Um, we are, are dependent upon the public to be eyes and ears and to be participatory in, in everyone's public safety. Can you give us victim spellings? Please? Yes, I can. The spellings I have are uh, for the victim on Pine Street, uh, Sheik Noor, which is uh, capital S-H-E-I-K-H-N-O-O-R. And the last name is Osman, capital O-S-M-A-N age 40. And uh, the other victim in South Burlington is Brian K. Billings, first name Brian, capital B-R-I-A-N, uh, K, don't know what that stands for, and then Billings, last name, capital B-I-L-L-I-N-G-S, age 37. Thank you. Uh, one of the things you had mentioned uh, in some of these earlier press conferences was that you know, a large proportion of the gunfire incidents in the city were uh, uh, within a small group of recurring individuals. I'm wondering if you're starting to see that circle uh, expand here in recent months. Unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately, yes, I am. 
Uh, I think that our, you know, I've said before that somewhere in the order of 50% of, of our gunfire was located within a relatively small group of folks. Um, that number is changing now simply because the last several incidents have not been involved, have not involved that group. Um, and a component of that, frankly, is uh, some really great arrest work that's been made. Uh, we have arrested several of the people who were most, uh, most prone to actual violence in that group. Um, and their removal from the board, as it were, has, has decreased gun violence in that group. However, since then, we've had the murder in City Hall Park. We've had the shooting, the, the gunfire incident in City Hall Park that we believe was potentially associated with Mr. Descent. We've had, obviously, this murder now. Um, and so those have changed the, the balance a little bit. We had a, you know, an incident of reckless endangerment with two young women down at, uh, at Perkins Pier. Um, but I, I do believe that the, the arrest of, of uh, Abaka Halawe, um, that we believe him to have been associated with several of these incidents. Uh, we're still working to determine whether or not there are others. Um, and we do have unsolved uh, cases that are in open investigation, and we'll see where those take us with regard to whether they were committed by someone we know or someone new or not. Any indication it's uh, any of this is gang related at all? Again, in this particular incident, no, I do not believe that to be the case with these particular incidents. Alex, can you address the uh, fact that uh, it looks like you started on focusing on this guy, even in much as Wednesday night after the shooting. I mean, did that give you sort of a leg up on this case? Because guys were, the task force were working on him for that, that shooting and, and it just sort of evolved into this and they, they could pick up a lot from what they already knew. Sure, uh, that's the whole point of the task force, right? Is that we want we want this core group of folks to you know, know, know sort of the problem set, if you will, of what we're dealing with. And that's not to say that, you know, things aren't going to appear from outside of that core group, right? Which is what the chief just uh, sort of commented on. But uh, it, it certainly helps that, you know, we have folks that have already been working on this. And so when they respond to this, you know, when they respond to this incident on Sunday night, you know, we sort of, I would say we absolutely have a leg up on some of this stuff, which is sort of one of the core principles of the task force is to have a, you know, a set of people that are working on these incidents, right? We talk about Burlington a lot, but this particular one last night spanned both Burlington and South Burlington, and it's, it's you know, it's not going to stay contained just solely to Burlington. So having these folks that, that know how to work these and have the expertise is, is really what, what uh, we want the task force to be all about. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming. Um, we appreciate it. And uh, I will, if there are other things, I'll try to get that information for you if it's available. Okay. All right.